Hey guys, it's Miss Foley, and today we're going to be reading a story called A Day and Night in the Desert. This story is written by Caroline Arnold. What do you already know about the desert? What kind of animals live in the desert? What is the temperature like? What kind, what does the like ground look like? What kind of plants are there? These are all things that we already know. So this is background information we have about the desert. So this is an informational book. And when we have an informational book, it means the author's purpose is to inform or to teach us about the story. So our purpose for reading that this book is to learn new information or new facts about the desert. In this story, we're gonna see captions and labels and fact boxes, and it's gonna help us learn more information about the desert. So turn your listening ears on. Here we go. 6 a.m. Tap, 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 tap. It's an early spring morning in the Sonoran Desert. A woodpecker drills a hole into the saguaro cactus. The tall plant will be a good place to build a nest. On the ground below, a coyote looks for a shady place to rest. A jackrabbit spots the coyote and bounds away on long, strong legs. The saguaro cactus can grow 40 to 60 feet tall. This is the tallest kind of cactus in the United States. That's a fun fact that we just learned. 9 a.m. A lizard warms its scaly body in the morning sun. Nearby, a hummingbird whirls its wings and sips nectar. Its long bill fits the flower perfectly. High on the rocky slopes, bighorn sheep nibble grass. A hungry Gila monster comes out of its burrow. It looks for nests containing eggs or small animals to eat. The Gila monster kills its prey with a venomous bite. This monster can live without food for up to one year because it lives on the fat it stores in its tail. I did not know that. Noon. Shadows grow short in the midday sun. Heat bakes the desert floor. Coo, coo, calls the roadrunner. It races after a small lizard and catches it in its bill. The roadrunner runs back to its nest to feed its young. A desert tortoise searches for flowers, leaves, and grasses. Its tough shell helps keep it cool. The tortoise breaks off plants with its mouth and chews them. When the tortoise is done eating, it goes back into its cool burrow. A desert tortoise gets almost all the water it needs from its food. It can live without drinking for up to one year. I did not know that either. That's another fact that we learned. I have a question for you. Why do you think that the author puts what time it is on each page? Why do you think the author includes the time? Right, she wants you to know what time it is because different animals, they come out at different times. So that's an important thing because sometimes when it's later in the day, you don't see the same animals out as that you would see early in the morning. So that's important for us to know what time it is. Let's keep going. 3 p.m. By afternoon, the desert air is very hot. Most animals stay out of the sun, but the antelope ground squirrel does not seem to mind. It scampers across the desert floor, gathering seeds, fruit, and insects. Its tail shades its body like an umbrella. The squirrel keeps watch for snakes and other predators. A red-tailed hawk circles in the sky. It is looking for something to eat. The squirrel sees the hawk and dashes to its safety inside its burrow. The antelope ground squirrels often climb barrel cacti to eat the fruit. No one knows how they keep from getting stuck by the cap cacti's sharp spines. 6 p.m. Daylight fades and the desert air cools quickly. Nighttime animals come out to hunt and feed. Picaris grunt to one another as they search for roots, fruit, fruit, and seed. 
They use their noses like shovels to dig up cactus roots and other plants. A prickly pear cactus hides the entrance to a pack rat den. Its sharp thorns help protect the pack rats from predators. Its fruit, when ripe, is a good source of food too. Pack rats collect seeds, leaves, cactus pads, and spines and store them in their den. Picaris are also called juvenile. They live in groups, sometimes more than 20 animals. Nine p.m. Stars twinkle in the clear desert sky. A ringtail climbs a cactus looking for ripe fruit. Mice come out of their holes to collect seeds. A rattlesnake slips out from under a rock and gets ready to hunt. It can feel the ground vibrate when mice move. Woo, woo, calls the owl. It searches on silent wings for rats, mice, and other small animals. It catches them with its sharp talons. The owl carries its prey back to its nest. A rattlesnake can inject venom into its prey through howl point, hollow pointy teeth called fangs. Look at the color of the sky now. It is dark out. Different animals at this time. Midnight. The cool midnight air is full of life. Bats swoop in the dark sky. Some chase tiny insects. Others drink nectar from cactus flowers. Arr, arr, howls the coyote. A long night it hunts for food. It will eat insects, lizards, mice, fruit, or whatever it can find. When the coyote finds a water hole, it stops for a drink. Scorpions and tarantulas crawl nearby, looking for spiders and insects to eat. A watering hole in the desert is called an oasis. Say the word oasis. Why do you think so many animals come out at this time in the night? What's your guess? Look at all the animals we see, bats, coyotes, scorpions. We see spiders. Why do you think so many animals are out at this time? If you were saying because it's much cooler and the desert gets really hot during the day, I think you're right. Oops, we skipped a page. Here we are. 3 a.m. All through the night, desert animals are busy looking for food. A kangaroo rat finds some seeds and stuffs them into pouches in its cheek. It will store the seeds in its burrow. A knit fox looks and listens for rats and mice. Its large ears can hear the tiny high-pitched sounds. The knit fox sees a kangaroo rat and pounces. But just in time, the kangaroo rat leaps away to safety. Did you know a kangaroo rat has long hind legs and it can leap several feet in one hop? 6 a.m. The sky grows light and the sun peeks over the horizon. Nighttime animals settle down for the day. Owls return to their nests, and Nip Fox goes into its burrow. Carries curl up for a nap. It is time for daytime animals to wake up and start a new day. Lizards warm themselves, jackrabbits find leaves to nibble, and birds collect food for their young. Every day and every night, animals find food, water, and safe places to rest in the desert. It provides them with everything they need. What time is it in the desert now? It says 6 a.m. Right, it's the next morning. So we've gone through a whole day, 24 hours in the desert. And the book started at 6 a.m. And now the book is ending at 6 a.m. On this page, since we're learning information in this book, and is, it is an informational book, we see a bunch of fun facts. I'm going to read you a couple of them. A jackrabbit's large ears can help it stay cool. Blood flowing through the ears allows extra body heat to pass into the outside air. And then on this page over here, we see the glossary. And the glossary we've talked about before, it's like definitions. So if we're not sure what it means when we say we're not sure what a burrow is, we can look it up. 
A burrow is a tunnel or hole in the ground made or used by an animal for a shelter. Or maybe we're not sure what vibrate means. Vibrate means to move back and forth quickly. And on our very last page, we have the index. And we've talked a lot about what the point of an index is. And since this is such a long book with so many facts and so much information, if we want to go back and reread, we can find keywords on this page and then go look for them. So maybe I just want to read about bats. And I would go to page 14 for that. But maybe I want to read about lizards. What pages could I go to to see that? Four, six, 15, and 18. So an index is very helpful to the reader. Thanks so much for listening to our story today, guys. We'll see you later.